Welcome back to another episode of the j and Body Works podcast. Lately, we've been having a lot of really interesting guests on from different walks of life, but today I'm excited to sit down with a gentleman who I think we can really nerd out about cars with. He's got a, a wealth of knowledge, he's a big car fan. Uh, without further ado, this is Antonio with In the Driver's Seat with ABS. Um, he is a member or an employee at the Audrain Automobile Museum in Newport, Rhode Island. So we're excited to sit down with you today, man. Thank you so much for coming. That was a lot to to dish out there. It's a lot of different words. You yeah, know, it's a long name, but yeah, super happy to How be on I the do? show. I did all right. It was good. You did everything right. Awesome. Yeah, so. Thank you so much, man. Super happy to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Well, first and foremost, you are you officially hold the record for the longest drive to come on the podcast. <laughs> at okay. Probably three hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's interesting in Rhode Island. We. Uh, where we live, there's a, at least where my house is, there's a, a, a hill. Rhode Island doesn't really have a lot of elevation, but if you go past that hill, there's a tower on the top of the hill. And in Southern Rhode Island, if you say you've passed the tower, then you've gone too far of a drive. It's literally like 15 minutes from my right. house. So so I, I made it past the tower today. Which there you is go. Good. That's <laughs> awesome. And what do you, what's your daily driver before uh, we get into things? Yeah, so I have a 2016 Mini Cooper S. Uh, I love minis, I've always loved them. You know, what so color is that? It's like, so it's called volcanic orange. It's like a mango. So it's not a uh, good color. Yeah. It's fun. Whenever I'm waiting, waiting for guests, I, uh, usually I'm outside just kind of looking to be the first point of contact and I can kind of tell like when the guests come in, okay. Uh, Ultima's passing by. I can't, can't be the guest, you know, like a uh, Jeep Wrangler. Okay. Maybe get like, so that mini Cooper, it's a very acceptable car person's daily driver. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's sporty. It's fun. It, it's cool. But that's awesome, man. The the thing I think we should start with is tell us a little about who you are. What is Audrain Automobile uh, Museum? And tell us about in the driver's seat with ABS. Yeah, so um, like I said, you know, uh, my name's Antonio. Uh, I've always been a super long term car nerd. My kind of my story is when I was a kid, I loved fire trucks. My earliest memories were fire trucks. I would make my parents, grandparents drive me to the fire station so I could see fire trucks. And when I was like three, my dad came home from work and he had a scale model of a Ferrari 250 GTO and he handed it to me. And I remember thinking, oh, wow, you know, this is red. Fire trucks are red, but this is way cooler looking. So how old truck. were you at that point? I was like three. OK, because after three, I feel like if you're like seven and you still love fire trucks. Yeah, there, there could parents be. Parents start could, getting a little nervous. Like a test, yeah. yeah, we gotta get you tested. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There could, could be a problem. Yeah. yeah. They have extreme fire truck disease. Yeah, yeah. Wetting the bed and other yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. No, I, I didn't have any of any of that. Uh, <laughs> but, That's awesome. But yeah, so so I was like, wow, this, this looks super cool. Um, growing up as a kid, I had a really hard time reading. Actually, turns out I'm uh, dyslexic. And, uh, you know, being in school was kind of always difficult because I feel like the other kids would uh, learn faster than I did. And I, you know, I felt to be different. Like, I don't want anybody to feel bad for me or anything. That's just kind of like how it was. So I actually had a, a super cool teacher uh, who kind of recognized that, like, you know, here's this car obsessed kid and she would kind of modify uh, like book reports and stuff. And I learned how to read through car magazines and motorcycle magazines awesome. and, uh, you know, with the help from my parents, too. But, they, you know, it really pushed me along. So the car obsession was was always there um when i was like 16 got my license it was like in the first little bit of freedom uh, i had a mark three golf it was nice like slammed it was fun it was a five speed and then i started seeing uh cars in in newport and if i ever wanted to see a cool car i'd make my parents drive me to the local nice restaurant or maybe because my cousin lived in new york we'd come down to the city and see something cool or We'd stop at Miller Motor Cars and I could mm -hmm. see some some supercars, which was always great. So I, I saw this museum in town and, and they had an exhibit and there was a, a Bugatti Veyron in there. Wow. And there was 458 Italia and there was a Diablo. And it's like, holy crap. Everybody's like, dream cars. How, how are these cars in this museum? So they started doing cars and coffees, started going to the cars and coffees. And then I started meeting the people that worked at the museum. And uh, I was trying to figure out like what the deal was. And so I kept pestering them and asking if I could help out to anything. And they were kind of hesitant. They're like, you know, who's this kid who's like constantly asking us if he can help out. This kid who loves fire trucks. Yeah. It's like, oh man, that kid in the fire truck <laughs> kid, like get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I started calling the museum like every couple of days to be like, hey, it's Antonio. I met so-and-so at Cars and Coffee. I was wondering if I could come in. And after like the third week of calling like every other day, they were like, fine. 
come to the museum, you can volunteer. So I started volunteering. Their goal of uh, having me be a volunteer, I think they were kind of like trying to push me along. They're like, we want you to learn everything about all the cars in the exhibit and we want you to start selling memberships. I immediately started, I, don't, I didn't know anything about it. I immediately started selling memberships. We just go up to people, start talking to them. And I think they were like, oh wow, like maybe this kid has some value. From there, uh, that kind of went on for a couple months and then uh, I became an intern. Then I was an intern for a while. Uh, the big boss who runs everything, uh, he wanted to do a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, uh, I volunteered to do the YouTube channel. And had you had any previous history doing stuff like that? Uh, very little. Uh, I had my own channel where I would uh, do like car reviews. Like I would find people at Cars and Coffee or, you know, like uh, my grandfather had a Miata and like I learned how to drive stick on the Miata. So I did a video on that and then like some BMWs and whatnot. And I actually had some videos that you know, for a channel with like 200 subs, I had a couple of videos do like 50, 60,000 views. Wow. And this was like 2016, 2017. So I was like, wow, like people are actually watching me talk about cars. There's something like, there. And everybody else is, you know, I'd start talking about cars apart from my car friends. They'd be like, all right, dude, it's enough. <laughs> it's enough now. Yes, I'm sure you guys probably... It's like a weird shame where it's like the closest people in your life probably aren't into cars. Yeah. And you're like, oh man. My dad, my dad super is, so like I always had him, but gotta hang out with these weirdos out here and like yeah. talk about cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny because it's like, you know. Ex fire truck hits. <laughs> Yo, I, that's where I'm going after. That's the this. last fire truck joke. <laughs> I'll have to put my foot down. <laughs> that's my fault, really. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all good. I'll probably make another one. All right, good. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was good. So like they, they definitely included me in stuff. And I think through my own persistence, they, they wanted me to be there. But, you know, yes, about the odd drain for those that don't know, it's a, it's a museum in Newport on Bellevue Avenue, which is the really historical part of Newport. Uh, the museum collections itself, there are about 550 vehicles. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And there's uh, four exhibits that are done a year. And through that, we do a ton of events. We do 30 cars and coffees a year. Um, we do events in the museum. We do events uh, outside of the museum. We have a subdivision called Audrain Motorsport. We do tours and rallies and cool. and stuff like that as well. And then we also, uh, the year kind of ends with our big uh, Concord Motor Week that happens in Newport. Brings about, you know, 70 to 80,000 people into town. It's a yeah, four-day event. It's kind of like the East Coast uh, Car Week. Um, and it happens at historical mansions and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of stuff going on in, in Newport. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's fun to be part of all of it. Yeah. Newport is a, I went to school in, in Providence and in, in Rhode Island. And, uh, as a, as somebody who was into cars, there, there wasn't really a car culture in, in that part of Rhode yeah. Island, at least. And, and uh, now there is, which is there pretty is. wild. That's yeah. awesome. I was telling you this story before I had been on a, a popular street, uh, near Brown and there was a Ferrari Enzo had driven down the street and I was with the guys who were closest in my life at the time and didn't know anything about cars and i was like we have to look at this car and yeah like, yeah why and i was like you don't understand what's going on but um are there any notable i'm sure there's they're all notable but are there a few cars in the collection that stick out in your head as stuff that you're like that's my favorite thing or that's something that's super interesting that has a crazy story yeah so i mean the collection ranges from the late 1800s all the way up until now um a couple cars, there's a 1907 uh, Vanderbilt Renault racer. So Willie K. Vanderbilt, um, he saw a race in 1906 and he was like, because, you know, the early 1900s, only these like super wealthy dudes in these areas could afford a car because, I mean, they could afford it. And also that's where the roads were. It's like, right. And a lot of these roads were dirt roads, but at least they were kind of like decently paved in, in Newport. So we called up Renault and he ordered 10 of these for him and his buddies at wow. 20,000 a piece, you know, in Back then. 1907. And uh, we have one of those in the collection. Wow. And it was his car. So to see this Vanderbilt racer, I mean, it's this massive car. It's probably, I don't know, 16, 17 feet long. It's wow. tall, crazy, like steering shaft. It's mm. all this beautiful brass. And that car could do like 90 miles an hour back, back then. In the day. Wow. So it's another 16 foot long car. Huh? What's like a modern 16 foot long car? Uh, like a Rolls Royce gets there? Yeah, probably like a Dawn or like some I, Phantom's probably bigger than that. Just so but, people can get in their head like what that actually means. That's, yeah. that's crazy. The thing with those like brass era cars, especially the big ones, is 
they're they're long but they're also super tall mm. like you're you're sitting like pretty high up like you have to like step up into it almost like a truck because those wheels are so big it was really right. before they started to understand how to take the center of gravity and, and low it to be a, like a sports car. I, you couldn't pay me to drive 90 miles an hour in a car like that. Why were the Hell wheels no. so big just to kind of get it going a little bit easier? Yeah, I, I know from so. like mountain biking, we're all like, that's kind of like the ML, like the bigger the wheel, yeah. the easier it is to get it going. Absolutely. I think, I think it was just easier for it to spin. Um, I mean, those cars, I mean, there's so much history and so much happened in those formative first, you know, 20, 30 years. A lot of the stuff that, exist today was already invented back then like you know you, you know we were talking about electric cars like electric cars existed in the early yeah. 1900s not many you know, people think they're like oh a tesla like that's the first electric car yeah. like not at all yeah i think ferdinand porsche's first project was actually yeah. an electric car yeah and yeah. so uh, i don't think a lot of people really know that and you know like i think they're saying now like companies like lucid and tesla have this big advantage in the electric car world over a company like Volkswagen because they're kind of taking the things they have and the things that they know, whereas like Tesla and Lucid will start from scratch. So I think back then they didn't have rules. They didn't have, yeah. they weren't building on stuff. They were kind of like, like throwing stuff against the wall and seeing if that sticks. And that's why, you know, <clears throat> fiber optic lights and LEDs yeah. and like not LEDs, but like there, there was a lot of tech that's happened then like you look at like the auburns and stuff like that and or cords yeah and you're like wow like these things were very very advanced at the time stuff that wasn't used again until way later like almost in the 2000s yeah because they were just throwing things to the wall to be unique and like they're like we don't know what to do yeah yeah so very even, true even more recently uh, to, to your point like i know that old honda preludes had rear wheel steering that was uh, what the 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 late 90s and early 2000s and now that's that was just kind of like a thing they put in it's the an car op an option on your uh gts for like five everything grand. we had a, yeah. a yeah. hummer ev in the shop recently which by the way i love that that's a that's the only electric car i can really get down I, that's I what like we were it. talking yeah. about yeah. it's like there's a tesla I've, I've i had one that i drove for a while and one that i drove very very quickly and soulless boring annoying um that car if you want to kind of get your foot in the door if you can afford it that is a really cool like they're not yeah. electric cars aren't cool but that car had the crab walk feature yeah and i was like what is going on it's fun i've done the crab walk it's one. it's yeah. wild yeah, yeah. yeah the turn radius is great for such a big car it is you know what i mean like if you're driving like a big like whatever f-150 and you just feel that weight you feel that size all the time to have that crab walk in that hummer and just be able to turn like you're in your mini cooper is pretty cool yeah what's your like for lack of a better way of saying it, your car ethos, like what's your, what's your niche? What's your, what, what's the thing when you see it driving down the road, that's your yeah, style. Yeah, what I gravitate to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I like racetrack inspired cars. Anything that, that would be good to absolutely carve a canyon or go all out. And mm -hmm. like, I want something that's powerful, but nimble and also lightweight. It's like GT3. Yeah, RS. I mean, everybody's gonna say GT3 and it's that's like the thing now on, you know, on Instagram, it's like, oh, the GT3 RS is overrated, which I can see why people would say that because maybe it's like an unoriginal thought, but I've driven a lot of GT3s and a lot of three RSs and like, they're super good. Like, Nothing overrated about it. Yeah, it's it's a, gr it's a great car. And so like, I mean, I, I would love, you know, a GT3, a three RS. Something like a Boxster Spider. So nice. The first one, like the 987, is probably my favorite version of the of the Spider. Um, I love the 458 Speciale. is yeah, amazing so nice. to drive. Um, so kind of those like race inspired cars from like the the late uh, early or the late early 2000s. How do you feel about the uh, you know like the Delta Integrale Evo two stuff? Oh like yeah, that, like rally I mean, inspired rally cars stuff. Are amazing yeah yeah we uh, last year out at car week uh my friend and i had his uh 944 turbo out there and we did a uh, an early morning drive with uh, one of our friends who has a uh, i think in a evo 2 integrale uh evo 2 sick car yeah so cool Just and like so different yeah yeah and we're on uh carmel valley road out uh, near monterey and if you've ever been on it there are there are portions of it that are super bumpy but i mean you can go pretty fast and you know, we were in the 944 like this, which is a great car. Don't get me wrong, but the the Lancho is just like really you could straight. see it like going through, and you could see all the suspension like trophy work. trucks. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very cool to see that car in action. I mean, you drive one now; they're not super fast compared to what we have today. Yeah, but seeing that car like 
through those roads and like really going through the turns it's like okay i i get why that car is so good yeah i really one of those futuristas in the shop have you seen those oh yeah yeah very cool car that's like the amos or yeah okay yeah Yeah, that was a two door and they it it was a matte green car it was it was pretty sick yeah that was one of those cars where that's a big boy car that's like half a mil for one of those i think yeah more no i think i think i don't know how many there are i don't know how yeah. hard they are to get them i think they're about half a million i don't think i mean it's it's kind of like i was yeah. listening to something yesterday it's like <clears throat> how much really should you be paying for a singer right like is it really a two million dollar yeah. car at the end of the day i've driven a singer i've driven, what was driven that like a singer classic um so we, we have one in the collection really i mean the fit and finish i mean from from the outside and, and looking at it i mean beautiful car it looks like to be made super well um the day that I drove that car, we also have a car, uh, an 83 Targa that was uh, uh, we bought, I think, on Bring a Trailer or, or somewhere locally. And um, we immediately had it shipped to Canapa in mm-hmm. California. And uh, they went through the whole car and they put a four liter in it. Cool. Crazy gearbox. Um, what was the four liter from? Uh, I don't I don't remember. But I mean, it's making over 400 horsepower. A small car. Wow. And, you know, full, full everything underneath reinforced chassis integrated roll cage into the it's a targa mm-hmm. into the targa top we had extra seats from a singer so we put the singer seats in it and we did a similar like a uh, basket leather weave on the doors that's one thing i love about those cars they're attention yeah. to the little details are really cool yeah but i mean driving the canopy car is what i wanted the singer to be really because really was it better or it was just way better so really? it, it's like it, when we have people that come to visit us, if we if they have time and we can stick them in a car for thirty minutes, we put That's them in the that. Does it look like an SC? Does it have impact bumpers? Um, with the rubber like. Yeah, the... I think we took them off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a, it looks like a it's a real sleeper. Like it's that car is insane. Yeah. It looks like a normal car. It's not a wide body. I mean, it's. I'm bonkers. doing a project myself now. Um, I had an 82 911 and I'm going to be putting a 3.6 in. Nice. Um, it's probably going to have about 300 horsepower. So side by side, I'm doing this project. And then a buddy of mine is um, restoring a roof car with us. And um, he's got that integrated roll cage and he's got yeah. quite a bigger engine. He's, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I want to get my car done. Yeah. He's, uh, he's got a lot of free time, this guy. And he's, I don't think I know anyone who knows more about these cars than him. Yeah. So yeah. his car is really coming nice, but it's, it's, it's cool. And it's cool to see this car and think like, he's probably putting a lot more attention and effort into it than maybe yeah, yeah. not like a DLS, but the average singer. So it's, yeah. it is cool. It's interesting, interesting to hear you say that, that it's, I mean, there, there's stuff. I was <clears> one of the first people with, uh, you know, my podcast guys were some of the first people to tour their new facility in California. I mean, it's incredible. And like, you can eat off the floor and yeah. it's, I don't know how, many hundred thousand square feet i mean it's huge really yeah i mean it's a massive ma- i mean if you guys had that kind of space you'd be unstoppable <laughs> yeah. i mean i saw the energy downstairs like you guys work hard like the boiler room it's, yeah it's it's, it's, it's evident we're cranking it out yeah, yeah it's so very evident for people who don't know singer is this kind of bespoke they're not I, I guess you can call them a custom bespoke shop but basically they design cars that are so based por- off Porsche 911 reimagined reimagined you got to be careful with the with the really? verbiage yeah oh yeah they're very specific about yeah, it yeah oh yeah but they're they fetch crazy numbers and they're stunning to look at i mean yeah. they yeah, the DLS was sick cuz they got all the partners in and they had the guys from Williams and the guys from you know BBS for car everyone kind of came That's in and serious really did some proprietary stuff yeah. and i'd rather have a roof if like if I had the money to buy one, yeah, they're really cool. That's what my buddy was saying. Was doing the roof. He just said, you know, they were they were modifying cars. He said they were modifying uh, three fifty sixes. So yeah, you know, they yeah. just been at it longer, and you know, they really have the provenance. And he went out there German to buy base. a bunch of stuff. He went out there to see if he would fit in the seats. Nice. And he sent the seats back, and he said the seats were the single most expensive thing he's ever bought that wasn't a car. I believe that. So it yeah, was, yeah. They're, they're stunning and the car is coming. The attention to detail this guy's putting in is insane. So. I got to tell you, the one thing that Singer did that blew, like I was floored, was when they released that video of the rally driver driving their off-road Oh, yeah, that car. thing's dope. That, that thing is yeah, 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 yeah. bananas. And yeah. the thing that I also really appreciated about that is we all know guys who have tons of cars and don't drive them. And I'm sure you're in the same camp. It's like, if you're going to have a car, let's, let's drive it. Yeah, absolutely. And I heard the the they were saying in that video or another video that the gentleman who made this car is going to drive the shit out of it. That's and awesome. That's fucking awesome. Super commendable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to yeah. love that. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. Like, I feel like Porsche is like car guy level one, where it's like, you know, you grow up and like whether you're into cars or not, you're like, okay, Ferrari, Lamborghini, very cool. Yeah. And then like you hit a point where like maybe you get a little bit of money or you're like thinking about getting a car and you're like, oh, these are like kind of cute. And they're like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And they're like, a little under the radar and like everyone gets like this fascination with them and you get into the singer stuff and they're just it's just the biggest thing right now we, we had a buddy on i don't know if you heard of valve and piston no oh, it, yeah. it's, it's a big instagram page okay. the guy who runs it hootie is the man he's a really cool guy we see him a lot locally um his page is huge and he's you just saying like i'm okay. trying not to post air-cooled Porsches. He's like, I love them. I have one myself. And yeah. it's just like, if I see one more, I'm going to like, you know, blow my brains out. It's just, it's just... <laughs> but now it's also like every brand, like like ALD, Aim, Aim Leon Dor. That's why I did the uh, the abbreviation because I don't know how to say it. But they they did a Porsche. Um, you know, that guy, Greg Stompolopolis, like all these guys. Yeah, are, Daniel Arshon. Daniel Arshon. Like, yeah. so many. They're everywhere. It's just... I think, you know... And they're kind of ruining what it's supposed to be, which yeah. is an attainable... Porsche. Like sports yeah. car, kind of a visceral 100%. and tactile feel. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, for us, it's like, yeah, it's it's frustrating. It's like you kind of want to be the first person to like discover something and like it, kind of like keep it toward, like for yourself. But I think one of the reasons why it's so like uh, they're so popular is because of how good they are. Yeah. How, how good they drive. Yeah. And like people get a taste of that. It's like, in my mind, it's like, okay, you start like BMW M and then it's like you get graduate to like GT Porsche and mm -hmm. then it's like you go to something like crazy, like a hyper car, like if it's if it's ever possible. I mean, the sky's kind of the limit with this stuff, but Porsche as a brand, as a product, you know, I've driven probably over 60 of them from just like the entire lineage from GT cars to boxers to whatever it may be. And for me, they, they, they do such a good job of giving you a, a brand feeling from the cheapest car to the most expensive car and i think that's probably why and but also they they're really good at marketing and they're really good at selling them and now now there's they're at a i think they're at a critical mass stage where it's like you know you look at like a 992.2 it's like 200 grand like you know a, a base carrera like five years ago starting price would have been like 85 yeah, 90 yeah. it's like crazy it's like, getting crazy and that's it's, that's it's too much now if you can get it for that right because yeah. you talk to everybody and oh, they're saying the markup on stuff one Gotta thing give the dealer like a rolex so you could like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's like paying off <laughs> I remember when mom. the f80 came yeah. out and someone i knew bought one it was like 86 grand and i was like wow that's like porsche money i don't know what porsche you're getting for 86 grand now it's, yeah it's like a 718 you know yeah, like, like i don't even know maybe yeah maybe yeah a 997 turbo is probably out of that yeah range, you know what i mean 997 turbo now is like 130 i mean those are going up like it's pretty wild yeah if it's a stick one thing that i wanted to talk to you about is kind of this teslafication of of cars right you know you hear people all the time talking about how you know you look at a urus and you look at like a, a chevy blazer and you're like which or whatever the the, the gm car is that looks like it oh the buick the buick the new like electric yes buick looks like every a car urus. Yes. I, saw one. I was like yo it's uh yes <laughs> and um you know, the, or the, the, like the justification, meaning they, you know, you, you five colors, two interior colors. It, so one thing that I didn't like that Porsche did, but there's other things that I really like that they're doing. They took out the, the turnkey for yep. this 992.2. Now it's pushed to start. I still on the left side, which goes yep. back to their time at mm -hmm. Lamar. But I think that my, my overarching question is how do you feel about the current state of, of the car community, the car world? Like, I have this weird sense that cars are becoming newer cars more soulless. Do you mm -hmm. have similar sentiments or what's your feeling about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been super lucky to through the museum to drive a lot of new cars and also a lot of old cars. And the older I get, I mean, I'm 26, but it's like the older I get, the more I kind of gravitate towards the older stuff because all of the older stuff kind of has its own personality and, it's got soul. and yeah, quirkiness. And it's like, I drove uh, an all original, and I'm not to bring up Porsche, but like I drove an all original 67 911, like maybe like, I don't know, a couple months ago. And it was like the fact that it was still existed, it wasn't restored and just feeling, feeling the car and, and, and connecting with the car. It's like, you know, bond between man and machine. And like that, that was like such a great experience for me. And it's like, okay, a lot of the, the newer cars, yeah, they're super fun. They're great, but it's like they kind of have a similar feeling a, across the board. Right. 
and you know maybe that's due to safety regulations or maybe that's just the way that the government wants the vehicles to be made or how they can make them quickly so they can make money and right. yeah i mean it's ultimately the cars are a tool to most people right a to b and i think you know most customers or most people who are buying a vehicle they just want it to work all the time and they want it to just be like their iphone or whatever yeah you know it's people are say oh i want like a quiet ride it's like i get it like i i totally understand it but for us it's like right you know you want to hear the engine you want to feel the car it's it's i don't know yeah. Listen, if you're driving all over and you got a busy life and you're lugging around your workout stuff and your kids' strollers and all yeah. that stuff, and you know, you get into, you know, either like a Model Y or a Q5 and it's just like your phone connects. I mean, it's great it's for the job. Basically, you're driving it's, it's your great phone. For the job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some people can work with the charging aspect. Sometimes it's like, for me, I'm moving around a little too much. It probably wouldn't work, but, you know, it's convenient. Yeah, but like you said, it's you want to get in something and be like, okay, like you know, I, I my my first like nice car that I'm like I'm gonna I want to buy a cool car was a nine nine seven um point one um cab. just a base cab, and I drove that car like when I got in the car and I was going home, yeah. I was like, I am. Yeah, fucking you were looking. You were looking car. forward to it. My dad was like, "You are gonna lose your fucking license," <laughs> yeah. and I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the radio the on, and it would scream at me like. Push, push, push. Yeah. And it was it was all so much fun. And like yeah. now, you know, we have a 997.2 C4S cab, which is a great car. And I'll, you know, go on a two-week binge where I'll just drive that car and nothing else. Yeah. And it's great. But like there's, you know, I have more stuff that I need to move around. And it's kind of like connecting my aftermarket, Apple CarPlay. It's just like nothing's like, you know, it, it's not the most convenient car. And you could just see how people are like, all right, yeah. I'll just sell it all for convenience. And I think, you know, like being a car guy, I mean, for me, it's like I have the Mini and like my fun car, I have a Boxer S, but like it's... Great car. Yeah, which is a first gen. Underappreciated car. Yeah. Stick yeah. or a PDK? Oh, it, it, it was a first gen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's a stick. Eight, six. Yeah, it's a stick. Um, what year was it? Uh, it's an 02. Okay, so it had the one piece headlights. It didn't have that little yeah. strip in the front. The yeah. runny egg or whatever they call yeah, it. No, I like egg. those those headlights. I don't like the two piece ones though. I like the one piece one like yeah. your car has. With the glass. The 99 I don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's... it's, it, it's Definitely, it's crazy how much dated the the headlights look. On, yeah. on Do you have that like metal like what is it? I think it's a washer cap in the middle of the headlight. Does um, yours have that? No, mine doesn't have. Okay, that. I know the nine nine six has that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I think the oh, so mine's an 0, 02, so it's technically a point one. I think the O three and O four because they had like the modified uh, headlight where it kind of like did the swoop mm -hmm. line. I think those have it. Do they have like a different mistaken. tech? It was like a something Tronic. Uh. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's like an update to the headlights at a certain point in that area. Yeah. Mine have the, the xenon bulbs or okay. the HID, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. So like it has the nicer headlights. Um, I don't, where were we? I don't even remember where I was going. With we this. were talking about daily and like, you were talking about the 997. Nice and can yeah. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What I was trying to get at is like, as a car guy, I think it's like, you know, it's kind of nice when you have like a daily that you don't like, necessarily care about and it can be your a to b you know you know for your your work day but having a car that's like super fun that you can look forward to driving after work or on the weekends or it's like oh it's friday i'm like i'm gonna take the fun car hell, yeah. hell yeah i think i think that's like kind of like a healthy balance to the teslification of the cars is like you kind of put it yeah so one of the other things that i, I had had seen that porsche kind of came out with a statement and i want to get you guys opinion about this uh, a lot of people have been complaining about how large cars have been getting and like iter different iterations of it. So specifically, we're talking about the 911. Uh, the 911 has gotten so much bigger. Yeah. I mean, we have oh, a, yeah. we have a you have the the SC. We have 964 right now and uh, 993. We have a bunch of older Porsches and you put that next to it. We actually today we had something cool. We had the 996 GT3, which is the first of the GT3s. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that car's nice. Really cool. Really next nice to car. a it's not too raw. Next to a yeah, 992 like GT3, and those car the, the the difference in everything is shocking. So yeah. they were saying that the reason that's happening is twofold: one, safety regulations, and two, the tech that they need to put in these cars to make them modern. Um, do you guys feel as though that sort of stuff is maybe attributing to cars losing soul a little bit? You know, the things like putting new tech in and safety regulations. Do you think we're you think the government is ruining cars? 
Yeah, I mean, for the car guy, it is. You know, if you're about uh, driving something and having like a quote unquote analog experience right. and being connected to the vehicle, I, you know, I, I think that might be true. But also, like at the same time, the 992, in my opinion, is way better than the 991. Yeah. Like I've driven a lot of 991s and 992s. The, the best 991 is the GT2 RS. Like I th- think of that as like a holy grail car. Yeah, I'm not going to count that because it's just like way too good. But like I've driven like Sport Classic, I've driven the Dakar, I've driven the T. Like how was the Dakar? I love the Dakar. That's like my favorite 992. I mean, that's a big car, but it's like they did a really good job of taking a big vehicle and kind of like shrinking it around you when you're driving it. That's cool. So, but yeah, I mean, you look at it next to problem with the size. It is big. I mean, you look at like that next to a 997, which I think is like the perfect the peak the peak of like of it being like usable big but also not too small like yeah i mean it's gotten it's gotten big you know i love like a quick nimble car and it's kind of like a momentum car i think that's a really cool thing and you know obviously the smaller the car the better for a sports car but you know like you get in like an aventador or like you know a v12 ferrari or even like a v8 ferrari they're huge yeah and it just adds to the personality. I think it adds to the emotion of it. And it's it's a whole different kind of drive. Like an A12, for example. Yeah. yeah or was, even like yeah, you, know, you, you see like, like a newer DBS, S and Martin, you're like, this thing's gigantic. Gorgeous. But it's just like. It has a presence. Drama. It's just yeah. drama. And that's cool. But then, yeah, I mean, you get in, I don't know, like an X5M. And you're like, this is a big, fat, heavy car. Like even yeah. like we were saying before, the M5. Some video that's came out. Car. Every car that weighs the same or less yeah. than you wouldn't expect than yeah, the new yeah. M5. And there was like crazy, SUVs on there. Yeah, yeah crazy yeah, SUVs. Yeah. And then you get to like an E46 M3 and you're just like, this feels perfect. Yeah. yeah. I actually like the E36 better. but Really? I think I like the, the size of the E46. I like the shape of it. I love an E36, don't get me wrong. But I, I drove, I haven't driven many of them, but I got a chance to drive one of our buddies, E46's G Johns. And that was that was a really fun experience. It was the first time I got into a car and I was like, this is really cool. Um, Cause nobody had really let me drive their cars before that, especially not stick. Another car that actually really bumped my perspective of, of the brand was I got in one of the uh, first gen Audi R8s with the gated shifter. Oh yeah. That's an amazing car. A friend of mine has one of those. That's, That's an like amazing, amazing. That, really that amazing. gen with the auto is actually atrocious. <laughs> yeah. really? That is a terrible transmission. You get that like, Swing <laughs> motion. It's, it's like, like a puke. puke. Yeah. 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 So, similar experience. I got a 993 in the first day. My buddy, that same guy, G John, got an E36 M3. And we met up and we switched cars. And I was like, wow, this thing is a million times better than the Porsche. <laughs> really? Yeah. But I think that's the only time I've been in an M and I was like, this is amazing. Like, yeah. I have an E93 right now, and I think it's so disappointing because it's got no. Is it DCT or stick? It's DCT, which I then got into a stick shift one, and I was like, it's still got no low end torque compared to like a 997. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a highway bruiser. It's not really like, you can't really spin the wheels at like. Pretty looking though. Well, I was like that kid in, um, kid, I mean, he's like our age, but in Jersey, he used to be uh, M3 Murray. And now he's like okay. M5 Murray and he was at I've seen M5 AMG Murray, yeah. Murray at one point. But that dude, like he used to post the best videos because he also had an E60 M5 and he really showed like how good those cars were at super high RPM. He'd be doing like 170 mile an hour pulls on the highway and yeah. filming it. I'm like, bro, that's crazy. But yeah, those, those things on the highway, like they, you got to open them up. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the retro cars quote unquote that are coming out now so i think that the two most modern or i guess three most modern examples would be that that hummer yep. ev the new bronco and the new defender i personally think they all those three do it really well uh, i'm not a big fan of like the american stuff like the camaro or the mustang but uh yeah i like them i i dude i i have like a i'm not really like a suv or like a like a truck guy but like Every time I see a Defender 90, like the new one with the two doors. I love the two door. I like the four door. Yeah. I like the 110. Yeah. I hate the 130. That thing is terribly ugly. The 130 is disgusting. It looks just cool. The new one? They did a, I I think it's a Defender. I don't know if it's the the one nine or the 90 or the 110, but they put the engine from the M5. Yes. I was telling you about Uh, this. Octa? Yeah. Yeah. That thing's crazy. That's a 90 though, right? I think it's a, yeah. yeah. That thing's crazy. The V8 alone is pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool just because it's like they've had a long standing relationship with BMW. 
Yeah. Someone was telling me that if you bought an original Defender from like one set of countries, it had like a five series engine. And if you bought it from like South Africa or something, it had it had an engine from a completely different comp uh, company. I don't That's know cool. if it was an American engine or what it was. But I thought that was interesting. Yeah, makes sense. It's kind of like you know re rebadged cars. Like the, yeah, like the WRX was at, at one point. Saab was like they had. Oh that, really? Yeah, they had like that rebadged. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Or like the yeah. Holden Ute and yeah, and the Ford yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, Holden Chevy, Commodore, yeah, yeah, and they yeah the Chevy yeah. SS. I, I love that car. Yeah, the Chevy SS. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. Fast. yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of of sleeper stuff like that. Like one of the cars when I first got into burn a trailer was the Cyclone and the Typhoon. And those two love cars those. are so yeah. cool. Have you driven them? No, you mentioned bring a trailer. It's like the worst drug on the world. Yeah. Dude, you start getting on there and you just like, oh shit, an hour went by because I was just like looking at all this stuff that I like want to waste my money on. <laughs> our, our dad is like the yeah. business guy, like gets down to business when he's here, all business when he yeah. gets home, he just like, zon not zonks out, but he kind of like zones out. Yeah. And we would come down, uh, we, our computer, our family computer was in our kitchen. And we would come downstairs and I'll pull up chairs. And my dad would be in his underpants and a t-shirt, <laughs> yeah. e eating like a haagen bar. We would nice. be scrolling. So through so so yeah, the mission's great. Time. Like I would go home and he'd be just like, he'd eat and then he'd be on bring a trailer. And then I'd like go downstairs and grab some stuff, put some stuff in my car, make a phone call or two, go back upstairs. <laughs> right. And he'd have a t-shirt on and his underwear on it. And then like whatever, like I'd like go out, meet a friend, come back, and he's just in his underwear. <laughs> he's excited. <laughs> he's, and he's just eating like his third Ice cream, and dog yeah. bar. And we're like, yo, dude. And he's like, this is 993. <laughs> yeah. like, dude, why do they do that? I don't know. Like, yeah, Skylarks were a big deal when I was young. <laughs> yeah, and it's always like an educational thing, too. He's like, listen, you don't know, but the Mercury Marauder. in my was neighborhood. You know, this kid did. He would sit <laughs> at the corner of the car wash and just wax his car all the He never back. told him. We never he saw him. And he'd be like, why are you in your underwear? <laughs> yeah. Dude, what, they all do. My dad. Why do you have thing. seven popsicle sticks? He's always got like the. I mean, I'm wearing a beater, but he's yeah. always got like the beater. My boy. Line, too. It's like, I'm like, dad, you know, what if somebody comes over like put some pants on bro. oh i probably wouldn't put pants on yeah like, no it's my house <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i fucking paid a tax it's the fuck you talking about <laughs> <ass. laughs> so I, i'd be remiss my big word for the for the day nice i'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about two of the many guests you've had on your your podcast yeah uh what was it like sitting down with somebody who i look up to as a car collector in jay leno that must have been fucking crazy Dude, he's awesome. Like it, you always hear stories like that. He's a super nice guy, but genuinely he's like the nicest guy in the world. Um, we actually do a show besides the podcast on our uh, uh, museum YouTube channel called Mansions and Motor Cars, where we take cars from the collection and we bring them to a historical mansion in Newport. Cool. And then Jay like the Breaker and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Jay and Donald Osborne will, uh, who's the Donald is the CEO of the museum, but they'll uh, relate the cars to the to the. The uh, to somewhere. the mansion and then they'll drive the cars and it's a like a great conversation what's super cool about them is i mean they just like they don't rehearse like they just do it all off the cuff like they're so talented but dude jay, jay is like the the nicest guy in the world really yeah he he's he's a guy's guy he's a, he's a guy's guy and like whenever he sees like uh, us younger guys he'll always like come over and he'll be like ah oh, gentlemen gentlemen <laughs> like like that's cool yeah and he, you know he he really respects us um he had an accident where he broke his collarbone and i broke my collarbone at like the same time oh wow so when he sees me he's like oh that's your collarbone oh, my <laughs> that's cool that's up. cool you know, it's like he saw my cousin my cousin's a producer he saw my cousin at an event my cousin's like hey you know you work with my cousin antonio and his response was oh that's the kid who broke his collarbone that's you know? awesome he, he's just a boy like that's he's cool. he's a really nice guy i like i like hanging with he's him. funny in person because he's hilarious on on his late night show dude, he he is like off camera not anything bad but like no. off camera like the dude is hilarious sharp oh my god yeah and like any, how old do you think he is uh he's he's 73 or 74 wow He's still wearing Canadian tuxedos. Oh yeah, we were, we were just there for a week. We were at his garage for a week. Uh, Jay and Donald were filming a new show for Jay's YouTube. But uh, what's the garage like? Insane. It's crazy. Where is it? Uh, it's a, in LA, so it's in Burbank. But it's like, I mean, it. He has I think three hundred vehicles, but like, it just goes on and on and really. On. And with the cars are great, but what's cool about being at at Jay's garage is. Like every ounce of wall space is covered in some sort of memorabilia, memor memorabilia magazine, magazine, yeah, service like manual, everything. Yeah. Like photos of him, and like he has these like crazy like old uh, like uh, car advertisements that um, he has commissioned. Somebody actually paints them, and you know they're like some of them are like 
15, 20 feet, like wow. really huge paintings. And there's Easter eggs in them. Like there's a, I think it's like an old uh, like Buick ad. You see like a guy and his wife like driving the car down the road. And like if you look, it's like, oh, like, dude, that's like, that's Jay and his wife. Like, wow. So it, there's a lot, like, there's awesome. a lot of great stuff or it's like, you'll see like a, like a news article from like the 1984, like uh, charity motorcycle ride and wherever it was. And there's a picture of Jay, like hanging out with like whatever guys he was riding with. Like, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. He's yeah. into steam cars, right? He loves yeah, yeah, cars. he loves his steam cars. You guys have any of those? Uh, we do. Yeah, we have a couple um, uh, early Stanley steamers. Um, dude, riding in a steam car is like the craziest thing because theoretically, like they have no top speed because they just like keep going. Wow. So if you if you ride in a steam car and a lot of them are hand throttle, like you just go like this and it just it just goes and goes really? and goes and it's like it it scary yeah because they have like wooden wheels and <laughs> yeah and shit. it's sketchy no seatbelts right? the motorcycles there at, at our our place yeah we have about 60 motorcycles so a lot of like the like uh early like 60s and 70s japanese bikes but then we also have like newer like ducatis and kind of like you know, ducati 916 and kind of some of the newer stuff as well and what do you think is the, the, the nicest or rarest car you guys have there <sighs> um Damn, we probably should have done my. I mean, there's so many of them. I Give mean, me like your top five. Yeah, like the Black Enzo, the the uh, the uh, Vanderbilt car I was telling you mm -hmm. guys about. Um, like our our logo. So the logo. This is a an Alpha Six C from 1939. Oh wow! So we have one of those. Uh, we have a Doris Duke uh, Packard. So she was the cool. wealthiest woman in america she was a tobacco heiress hmm. we have her like limo basically that took her that's from, pretty cool yeah her estate from jersey to newport with her ashtrays everywhere <laughs> no no ashtrays but she actually had a, a mini bar from th cars from that's fire and she had like a like uh in the back she had her own privacy window radio controls that's awesome um she actually had a speedometer and a clock so she's like the original backseat driver she could tell the driver speed up slow down and you know i mean to have all that oh, stuff she's sipping on a martini oh yeah that's awesome what's your favorite car is it the 83 targa <sighs> that's one of my favorites to to drive um i mean if i were to give you like five because i can't think of like i can't decide on one it'd probably be like 458 speciale the the uh, 991 uh, gt2 rs mclaren 620r uh that car okay. is insane to drive one of our buddies has one Very front cool. end is crazy um the 83 targa and then i don't know maybe something like uh an sto or uh okay you know i don't know i i i kind of dabbled love the sto yeah it's a cool car that goes back to what you were saying before about yeah, you have an sto uh the, yeah, clamshell. yeah i saw yeah, that in the, the shower yeah. yeah yeah that car is drama like you look at that car you're like this is yeah drama yeah yeah so we have a few other things that i want to talk about one thing that we kind of have queued up which will be cool is uh i've been seeing this stuff on instagram a lot where it'll be like we're i'm a watch guy i really like watches okay. so yeah, yeah. like here's you have nine dollars you have there's three options, two dollars, three options, three dollars, and three options, five dollars. All right. So we got some stuff queued up. Same with UFC fighters. UFC fighters a lot too. So um we'll go uh Oh wow, you got some heaters on there. Yeah. So we'll go first we'll go to the the two dollar All right, so your two dollar options are a Porsche Boxster, Integra Type R, and a BMW E30 325. Then you go up to three dollars. You got the Corvette ZR1. You got the Aston Martin Advantage and the Porsche GT4 RS. And then your $5 options are the Valar, or Valor, excuse me, the 918 and the SB3 Daytona. So we, I can only spend nine bucks? Nine bucks, yeah. And you, we can go back and forth so you can kind of take a look. I mean, dude, this is kind of cheating because, like, I have one of those cars. Yeah. <laughs> go back to five. So I would do I would do the SB3 yeah, Daytona I, for sure. That car is insane. And then go, go to the, the threes. I think I would do, I would do the Vantage, I think. And that would just be it. I'd just take those two cars and call it a day. What are the two? Um, I would probably do the SP3. And then let me see this, uh, $3 options. Mm, weird for me, but I'd probably take the ZR1. Yeah. I think that'd be fun. That car is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They just think I would crash it. Dude, I'd probably do, uh, I'd probably do the SP3 and then... I don't know. I've I've driven up 4RS and like that car is like a scalpel. Like it's so good. It the sound and like the way that it comes through the airbox and it's like right behind your head. It it could possibly be the best 
Porsche they make right now. Yeah, I mean, I, and I should have added said that on my list of five cars. I mean, there's so many great cars out there, but dude, that and the Spider RS are in. I like honestly, I think I like the Spider RS more. I do too. I'm a convertible so. guy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The Spider RS is crazy. Could you daily, like, if weather wasn't an issue, could you daily a four RS? Me personally. I mean, dude, I made a lot of sacrifices in life. I probably could. <laughs> For the normal person, though? Uh, probably not. I no. mean, it, it's dr it's drony. And, like, you know, people are like, oh, you know, just drive it. But, dude, if you're, like, on the highway and you're doing a lot of highway miles and you have that constant drone, like, that'll get to you. I think yeah. you could do a 4S, though. I think most people could daily a 4S. Yeah. Right? Like, if you're not driving a your kids S everywhere. Not crazy, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you should mean, like, in terms of, like, a, a sports car that you can actually daily. Yeah. I think a... Dude, you can like do a uh, turbo or turbo S, probably a new yeah, one. Yeah, that's Re easy. I think reliability aside, something like a 12C, like like McLaren 12C, like those cars are with the hydraulic suspension. Like you know, you put it in its normal mode, and the car is so comfortable. Mm -hmm. You leave it in automatic, and it's just like. I drove a Tactica down from a customer's house. A what? A Tactica. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And I, I had it on like whatever strata whatever like the mm -hmm. the road mode is and I, I actually left the lift up the whole time and i was like this is like driving an a6 it was like yeah oh yeah pretty tame i did that with an uh, an m8 convertible recently and everyone talks about how fast those m8s are competition and uh it was one of the most comfortable cars that i'd i'd been in in a long time yeah that's hard to find something that that torque is right on tap but it's also yeah. something that you can genuinely feel like you can fuck yeah. around with i think it's cool what do you think your next car is gonna be <sighs> Your next daily and your next weekend. I want to. I want a Boxer Spider. Like I. I love that car. Yeah. I mean the nine eight seven. That that was that was like one of the first like cool cars I got to drive maybe like five or six years ago. I love the Spider. No one knew what the car was when it came out. Dude, well it's that and like his videos are dope. But like that Das Cayman guy, he's been making all those crazy videos with the with his Spider, and now yeah. like everybody's on the Porsche kick and the values are, it's like, you could get one of those for like 40 grand. Yeah. And now they're like 80 for, are a they already? Oh yeah. Oh, it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like even like the Cayman R like no one knows oh, that car exists. Dude. I love the, yeah. Like yeah. That crazy. Dope. Another cool sleeper though. And, and it still is like kind of under the radar is the, uh, like the Cayman GTS 4.0. Yeah. Those like are my, my boy just got one of those. Those are a awesome. great car. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's like a, a decent, affordable entry to the, if you want to go to Cars and Coffee and have something that you don't have to feel embarrassed about driving and parking in the back lot, I think that's a great. Oh, yeah. No, they're awesome. And you talk about like size, like I think the 718 is a great sized car because yeah. it's like you can still like reach across and like touch yeah. the touch the other side of the car and like you can park it. You put it next to a 992, the 992 is like really yeah, big. Yeah, it's, it's dwarfed, yeah. But Has the Boxer lost its chick car... Cliche. Dude, I mean, I, I don't. Not that a real car guy would yeah. care, because I drove a Boxer for a while, loved it. Yeah, amazing. It was like the first gen with PDK. Nice. It was a base. It sounded incredible, but like people be like, "That's a chick car." I'm like, "What are yeah. you driving? Yeah, what yeah. are you doing with it?" Dude, I like have like the two girliest cars imaginable between a first gen Boxer and a Mini Cooper. It's like I don't. The car guys know, like yeah, real car yeah. guys know. I don't care. I just I don't care about that. Like yeah. I like you know I've I've had like I mean I got my car for super cheap. You know, it like was not expensive. It like I think I got the for like ten grand. You know, right. okay. And it's like I've had like guys like like in like big trucks like, and I'm like I'm a small dude, but it's like guys come up to me at like the 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 gas the gas station and stuff, and they're like, oh like oh, would your dad buy that for you? It's, it's like, bro, this car is ten grand. You spent like seventy on your high country. Like, what are you talking? about? I get cute car a lot when I'm driving the nine nine seven. I'm like, oh, that's a cute car. I'm like, okay, yeah. thank you, Th thanks, chief. <laughs> your yeah, uh, yeah. your lights falling out of your truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so what what's your next daily? Uh, dude. I saw a new uh, Type R recently, I like Civic Type R. The, I, I think the new one's really good looking. Better like, looking than the last one, I think. Yeah. Oh, way better looking. The last one was like I a think I've seen the new one, but it's, I think it's a little we too had much one bolt on for me. The, yeah. the newer one is less. We the, had one, yeah. a, a, I think it was a white or a black one, and uh, it's rounder. It's a little bit less. The, the old one looked like you went to Mugen. And you were like, deck my car out. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. It looks like you think you're a transformer. Like, you can get your yeah. Car out. yeah, Optimus. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe Type R. I mean, I love the GR Corolla. I, I, love, I like that. Car. That a car's lot. dope. Yeah. I mean, I want to drive that car. All black, six yeah. shift. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the uh, M5 is debuting? M5 Wagon is debuting this month. Yeah. And that's going to be the first 
M wagon car sold in America. And we always talk about if you had a dream three car garage, which I'll ask you after I, I say this, um, what would be your unlimited budget? And my daily is always the the new RS six, but I'm a I'm a big BMW fan. I think it, when I see what that car looks like, I have a feeling that'll be yeah. the dream daily because that's you could get everything done in that car. I'd rather take an RS six. Really. I love dude. The RS six is you, know, you talk about like Leno. So during COVID, he got like one of the first RS sixes from Audi as a press car. We're on this uh, private road, and uh, he took my friend and I for a ride in it. And he's like, oh, watch this. And he like he yanks the wheel or all the way to the left and he slams on the gas and he just it was kind of like a fork and he just like drifted it around the turn, flies up this road. He's like, oh, the brakes are good. He slam <laughs> slams on the brakes and like like the for how big that car is, like it handles so well and it's so usable. And like that car will ever have like a special like, you know, Place. part part in me just like hanging out with Jay like. He, dude, he's like he. I mean, he's a good driver, but I was like not expecting that. That, that was fun. That is scary. So going back to that question, dream three car garage, daily weekend car, and Grail car, something that you would just look at. You know, yeah. Obviously, we talked about that wouldn't be the case for us, but something you wouldn't maybe want to drive because it's that good looking. Unlimited budget, so it's daily weekend car, Oof. Grail car. Uh, dude, you know, I I really like the daily. I do like. I really like that Defender ninety. Like mm -hmm. I I keep seeing those. I'm like oh. V eight. Yeah, probably. I mean, you know, unlimited budget. You yeah. Pay for the fuel. Yeah, probably a Defender 90. And then what was it? Sports car? Or? Yeah, weekend car. Some of the car those canyons you were talking about. <sighs> maybe like an Evora, like 400 GT or, or maybe like a Lotus, like uh, Exige. The Exige okay. is crazy. That's like a, and you never see any of them. Right. Um, And I'm trying to not like say Porsche. So I'm like trying to do non Porsche. Yeah, options. That's cool. Um, and then, I mean, an ultimate, like, dude, so I, I was at the quail last year when they unveiled the, uh, uh, the Koenigsegg, uh, yes, C yeah. CC 850 uh, okay. with the manual, like maybe something like that. Like that car, the Koenig Koenigsegg, like as a company is crazy. And the fact that they like build everything in house, he's like the last of like, the psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People trying to bankrupt their company on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe like something like that or maybe like a Yesco. I mean, those cars like Bugattis are awesome in terms of their technology and their usability and, and what they stand for and helping to push the envelope for the right. like, new age of hypercar. But I see a, a Koenigsegg and just the its road presence and the way it sounds yeah. and all the passion behind it. It's not like it has a parent company Volkswagen where it's like pumping in all this money. Right. Like, like they're do. I mean, I'm sure they have investors and other stuff, but like they're basically doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it even exists, yeah. you, know, you could buy a car like that. I mean, bonkers. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a really good one. What would you do? What about you guys? Um, I'll switch it up and say when that M5 comes out, I think that's a great daily because I, think you need something that you can haul the kids in uh put groceries i don't back. have kids so i don't think yeah don't right think, well yeah. i'm just i guess <laughs> if it's i still think i love a look of a wagon yeah yeah you absolutely know, every time i go to europe i feel like i'm a kid in candy shop because there's so many wagons out there um i think we have a, a new 992 gt3 touring in the shop right now that is just for me that's the perfect weekend car because it's got everything the gt3 has but it's stick it is a yeah. stick yeah and it's yeah. Uh, it was that lapis blue or something like that. It's just a really beautiful dark. Deep oh, you blue. guys did a video on that. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, that car to me is the perfect weekend car because it's understated, but also does what it's supposed to do. And then I don't know what it is about the Jaguar X220 or XJ220 that is just, I think that car almost looks modern. Yeah. Today. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a. I I wouldn't even think of that. Yeah, I, that car for me is a grail car. Like that car, I don't. Even, I would just want to look at that car. Yeah. And then they have some of those. I don't know the, the specifics on them, but they have the the racier versions of them that have some more arrow, and they're just. I like how those headlights turn yeah. in. I just yeah. think that car is fucking insane. I love it. I do like a twenty e sixty three. Uh, like the formatic one mm -hmm. for my daily. Um, you know what I'm gonna go for my weekend? I'm gonna switch it up, and I'm gonna go with a uh, SLR 722 Roadster. <laughs> I love those. 
Nice. Um, and then Andy Koshpin over here. <laughs> yeah, I love him. Um, they are really it's nice. Batman's yeah. car. And then um, I don't know. I I think maybe I always say the Enzo, and it's the only other car that I think I could put up at the top like that with the Enzo is probably like a Wyra R Roadster. I really love those. Like I saw some like I didn't even know what it was. It was at Miller once. They had some like Zonda R Barrachetta with like this yeah. like fake half a windshield and it was like like one of like one of those like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm a big pagani guy yeah. so there's a mclaren elva for sale on bring a trailer right now have you ever seen that yeah, yeah. they're roadster do they so it's i know that you can get a roof on those okay does it have a roof it, it, in the pictures it doesn't so, it might so no a uh, windshield i meant yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah and it does have a windshield and it's yeah. it's in that that like classic not volcanic orange just like orange yeah. mclaren yeah. color or something yeah it's, it's just that car yeah. is bananas but yes. um yeah that's a that's a good answer i like your answer a lot i like how you tried to go away from porsche because everybody always yeah we always yeah. do porsche it's just easy it's just too easy to default yeah. they're so good and it's like they you are know, you have to like tell yourself it. not to do that so uh two last things the first thing is i want to say thank you and also give you the opportunity to plug and promote everything that you have going on yeah uh, where can people find you where can people find the museum where can people find the podcast so take a second to kind of tell yeah, everybody I'll, I'll do it to any the, of the three cameras yeah, right, right, you feel right. comfortable with yeah so uh the instagram or tiktok is at driver's seat with abs and then our youtube is the audrain museum network um, on the YouTube channel, you can see uh, videos of uh, the podcast guys and I doing car reviews, going on trips, travel vlogs. And then you can also see stuff with uh, Jay Leno and Donald Osborne where they do videos in the museum or they do the mansions and motor cars series. Uh, and then also to come down to the Audrain Newport Concours and Motor Week from October 3rd through the 6th. Uh, you know, there's plenty of events, free events. There's a lot of exclusive events, kind of just every, every, uh, an event for all members of the family. Uh, and come to one of our Cars and Coffees uh, at the end of this summer. They go through to no November. So When's the next one? Uh, next one's actually this weekend. So it'd be uh, August uh, 4th. Okay. It's at uh, Audrain Park Place. It's actually one of our buildings. The one after that, I believe, is at uh, Fort Adams. So we try to hit a lot of the different locations in Newport and on the Aquidneck Island. Um, but yeah, you know, check out our stuff. Feel free to. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us.